So I wrote a free application to download the video wallpapers found in macOS Sonoma, link in the description, but I'd like to take a few minutes to explore the video backgrounds and get a bit nerdy. I'll explain how I was able to make this at a high level so non-developers can understand how someone might go about exploring and hacking the operating system. I know from personal experience that these sort of utilities seem like they're black magic. They aren't. If you have not seen it by now, Sonoma offers the same videos that were used as screensavers on the Apple TV as used for wallpapers and screensavers. They are browsable from the terribly redesigned system preferences. If you click one of these, it'll download. Apple does not make it clear where these land, but it is in Library, Application Support, Com to Apple Idle SSD, Customer, 4K SDR, 240 FPS. If you double click to open one of these video files, you'll notice that it is a 240 frames per second HEVC file. If you hit play in QuickTime, it'll start playing. The way that QuickTime plays back slow motion is very similar to the iPhone. You have control over the speeds through the player. Move the end caps around to make it regular speed and the center will be slow motion. For a lot of programs, they will not understand this file, so you may need to export it through QuickTime or another application. These videos are exceptionally long if you watch them in slow motion. The reason why Apple uses slow motion is that when they are used as a wallpaper, they'll play at the regular speed at the login screen, but then when you sign in, the video will slow down before landing on a freeze frame. It's a very cool effect, and I still haven't gotten sick of the transition. It looks great. Now let's start to get really nerdy. If we poke around and bounce into the parent directory for the video wallpapers, we can learn a few things. Opening up the Arial SQL Lite file, we can see a database of which files have been downloaded. I suspect the accessibility labels are pulled from the JSON file, more on that in a minute. And there's also some other stuff like the preview images, the IDs, etc. Now if we jump over to the entries.json file and format it, and what I mean by format it is take it to an online prettyifier and use it to make it so this is legible, this is where we can see the entirety of the preference pane. We have at top the entries for all the categories and below that the assets for all the individual video files in a massive array of objects. It's fascinating how messy these entries are as they're not in any sane order. Just scrolling over the entries, we can see the exposed URLs to the preview images and more importantly, the video files. So far, this has not taken any programming. We just used a online prettyifier or formatter for JSON and just expanded this out so it's human readable. If we take one of the URLs to the movie files and plug it into a browser like Firefox, it won't support HEVC video files. But if we take this to Safari, we can see the video. Now this is where things get more fun. Since I have this data, I want to organize the JSON to see if there's any sane ordering to it. I've written some simple JavaScript to organize things alphabetically and make the objects more human readable by ordering all the contents in the same order. Now things are much more organized and also much easier to understand. This is cool because we can more easily browse the data and see the accessibility names of the videos and find the URLs more easily. Interestingly, these are not the full names of the videos and there's several entries without an accessibility description. With a bit more JavaScript, we can grab the links to the images, the URL to the video, and the accessibility name and print these into a list using HTML. Apply a bit of CSS and now it's a nice visual browser of all the videos. Click one of them and it'll download. Now finally, since these URLs might change in the future or Apple might add more videos, this should be an upload button that lets me upload the entries.json file instead of using a pre-programmed list. And here it is in action. I just upload my entries.json file and it generates the list. I could have stopped here, but I didn't. This would be a lot more useful if it could automatically read the entries.json file. It would be also really nice if this was able to grab the full names of the videos. In the customer folder in the idle assets SD directory is the TV idle strings bundle file. If we right click this file and show the package contents, we can see all the language translations for each video file. If I open one of these files up in a text editor, we can see that it is a XML file. It only contains two things, an ID and a description. If we go back to the JSON file, we'll notice it too has IDs. We can use these IDs to cross-reference and grab the correct names, which also solves the problem of missing titles. 
To do all this, it really needs to be a desktop application so it can automatically read these files on a computer, and this is where Electron shines. I know that Electron has a bad reputation for being bloated, that's because it is very bloated, but it'll work for this application. I also added a fallback in case your computer does not have the appropriate files, so it'll fetch the entries.json and the translations from the internet, so non-Sonoma users can use this application too. The end result is a very simple app that loads all the preview images and lets you download the videos using the application. As a bonus, it even supports dark mode. I've put it up on GitHub as a free download. Just go to the releases section and grab the most recent version. This is nice if you want to download the videos for use elsewhere, but what happens if you want to download all the videos for use as wallpapers? Mike Swanson has made a cool Python script that we can run from our terminal to automatically download all the backgrounds rather than have to download each one of these individually. We will go to his GitHub page and grab the Python script. His instructions are fantastic, so I really suggest you read through them. Normally, I'd hit git clone for this demo, but I'll simply just download the Python script and run it from my terminal. If you try and run this command without the appropriate developer tools installed, you'll see an error message. Using Xcode select, we can install the command line utilities and it will have a pop-up and it was hidden behind some stuff on my computer, so I had to go looking for it. Click OK and wait for it to download. Once done, now we can run the command, and the command line utility will give us the options to download things by category. It also has the wonderful ability to delete previously downloaded files. Again, read the instructions. All the downloaded files will end up in library application support com.apple.idleassetsd customer 4K SDR 240 FPS folder. If you're like me, you're probably wondering what happens if you edit the JSON file, and sadly, it is nothing. I tried to replace the preview image of a video to no avail, and if I had to guess, I need to modify the Arial.sql light wall file. I cannot open the SQL wall file as it appears to be password protected, and databases are not my specialty, as I'm a UX guy. I can write queries, but only if I have to. There are some Reddit threads about replacing the desktop backgrounds after they have been downloaded, which is jankier than I'd like. Maybe someone more dedicated than me can unlock the mysteries of custom wallpapers. Speaking of wallpapers, in the past I have upscaled and manually touched up all of the Snow Leopard, Nature, and Abstract wallpapers, and those are downloadable from my blog for free, so you can check those out as well. Hey, thanks for watching this video completely to the end. You can check me out on Patreon.